Good evening. Thank you for watching. I'm Lea Hogg, and this is our current affairs update in English. The Honourable Dr. Mario DeMarco is here with me in the studio, and thank you very much for, for joining us My today. Pleasure. Good evening to you and everyone who's watching us. Thank you. Um, I'd like to focus, uh, before we carry on, on the press conference today by the leader of the opposition. Could we have an update, since it was in Maltese, and we have quite a lot yeah. of um, non-Maltese speakers? Absolutely. It, it, it followed the press conference which was held by the Prime Minister earlier today. Uh, following the, the increase in, in, in COVID positive cases that we've had uh, in our country registered over the past few weeks. As we know, also this week we had two days where we had over 300 cases, uh, both today and, and two days ago. Uh, and effectively, we know that if you look at it pro rata, we have today one of the highest rates of infections also across Europe. So the matter has been very much concerning. Uh, we've had a Prime Minister who's been trying to play down the rate of infections. At the same time, we have all the, the health carers, uh, the professionals, uh, the, the doctors, the nurses, uh, telling uh, the Prime Minister that he needs to take action and action quickly mm -hmm. before the situation spirals out of control and out of control of the able hands of our professionals at Mother Day. Uh, we've also had people within uh, the economy saying the same things. So the business chamber have also come out very strongly saying, listen, we need to take action and let's take action now when things are relatively quiet, rather than later on when you've got more active months, which are usually associated with, with the summer months. Mm -hmm. But the Prime Minister has been totally ignoring this. Mm -hmm. Until today, he had really no other alternative but to the announce the measures of having to close the restaurants, uh, the, bar, the, the snack bars and the coffee shops. Mm -hmm. uh, one may say that it is too little, too late. Uh, and it has come very suddenly for people who are involved in the restaurant business who would have stocked uh, their fresh food, their fish. Because their uh, we have to say that the measures are in place from tomorrow as of They are in place as of tomorrow. So people who have stocked up are saying, what do I do now with my stock? And it's understandable. But the so if we had planned for this before, one would not have needed to take such a drastic action at such short notice. Mm -hmm. And this was the basis of the press conference of, of the uh, opposition leader today, where effectively he's saying that the prime minister has lost control of the situation. Uh, the situation, the infection rate has spiraled out of control. And it shows that the minister doesn't have the tab on what is really happening. Mm -hmm. You've got the healthcare people telling him to take action. You have people within the economic sectors telling him to take action. He chose to do it his own way till it became too late. Mm -hmm. And now it's a literal case of too little, too late. Mm. We can focus obvious, obviously on, uh, on the point you brought up, the stocking of uh, food. Do you think they should be compensated? People have bought large stocks of food? I mean, you, you can understand them. I was, I was speaking to a restaurant owner who to said, I, I just spent over 2,000 euros worth of fresh fish mm -hmm. for the weekend. And I've got to throw it all away now. What do I do with it? Mm -hmm. uh, and so these are people who have suffered a damage. Forget the issue of the loss of business. Yes. Okay, because I'm sure they need to be compensated for that. Mm -hmm. But who's going to compensate them for the stock? Absolutely. They're going to have to throw away. Absolutely. And here I really believe, yes, you are right. They need to be compensated for the stock, which is going to be disbanded. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for that. We're taking um, a break just to join um, our guest today. Uh, from Montenegro, we're joined by the Deputy Prime Minister, Dr. Abazovic. Good evening. Good evening and uh, best regards from Montenegro for all your uh, watchers in, in, in Malta. And Thank for your guest, of course. Thank you very much. We've got the Honourable uh, Dr. Mark, uh, Mario De Marco with us, who is the Shadow Minister of Finance, and he'll be chatting with you in a while. Um, first of all, congratulations on uh, forming your new government, which uh, that's about three months ago now, isn't it? Yes, 90 days ago, it was formed a new government in Montenegro for the first time in our history. In our parliamentarian life, we have the changes in election, 
So that was the historical moment, and this is the government, new government after 30 years of leading on one of one party in Montenegro. I congratulate you on behalf you. of the opposition also and my colleagues over here. Um, you, were, you were pivotal in your fight against corruption and organized crime. What's your vision for the future in Montenegro? Yes, thank you. One of the biggest problems of Montenegro is the um, corruption and organized crime. And uh, the goal of this government uh, and ambition of this government is to uh, have the very visible result in, 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 in that area. So I think that uh, we start with that. Uh, I am a coordinator uh, for this kind of project inside the government. So office uh, cabinet of, of a deputy prime minister uh, working with the Ministry of Interior and also with Ministry of Defense and also with security service in the providing of, of fighting against corruption. And I can say that we are satisfied with the result in these last three months. So we arrest a lot of directors of the, of the different kind of agencies in Montenegro. We arrested one minister, uh, for, former minister of healthcare, of healthcare in, in Montenegro. We start in a, we start in a procedure of, of, of uh, um, uh, uh, investigation against one MP who was the former minister of agriculture in, in, in Montenegro. Yesterday, we arrest nine persons in the Ministry of Interior, which was connected with the corruption inside of Ministry of Interior, which work also in the, in the, uh, with, the, with the police. So uh, for this short period, uh, we have good news in fighting against corruption, but these are not so good news because explaining that in the past, we have a lot of problem with the public officials uh, who was uh, deeply involved in the, in the problem with the corruption and the, uh, probably or organized crime. Of course, for now we should uh, waiting for the for the process in the in the judge, but prosecutors start uh, investigation and uh, all these people uh, are now uh, under the uh, are in the process of of of, of justification or, or or process of, of judgment in Montenegro. So this is about about uh, corruption, and uh, I can say that uh, um, hope. We will come also to the to, to part which is connected with your country. That Absolutely. is the wind park. Uh, that is the wind park Mojura, one big affair which was in the focus during the parliamentarian election campaign, especially from our party. Uh, me personally represent many times the documents uh, which uh, just uh, showing that uh, job with the Mojura wind park is not so 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 clear. And uh, I think that also with support from your country, but also with support of with some uh, international expert in the in the uh, with the expertise in the in the financial investigation, we will also open open that case as soon as as, as possible. That is our ambition. It will not be so easy. Uh, look, when you have the changes first time after 30 years, you know that the most of the public administration works or against you or are they are not so friendly to work in opening of different kind of of cases but what can we do this is something which we get like uh, uh, what 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 we promised to the people of montenegro i am more than sure that the huge number of our population want to see uh, more justice in our ordinary life and uh, we should give uh, every kind of 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 of, uh, of supporting of that idea so uh, I am really glad to, 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 to speak also with the authorities of Malta and uh, I am more than sure that our government will start the official uh, conversation and communication with your government to help us uh, in, this, in this concrete case which connected to two countries. Thank you. May I ask, before I pass on to Dr. DeMarco, has your government initiated any investigations into the, the obscure transactions of the Mazura uh, wind farm project? Uh, government, uh, our, our special prosecutor started the investigation uh, before, in that period, before we create new government. So now uh, new government create one council that is the Council for the Fighting Against Corruption in high level, and that Council opened the Mojura case like one of the priority. 
So I, I hope that in next days we will start, the, uh, we will just uh, write first, uh, first letter to the, uh, your officials, to your authorities, and to have that formalization of communication for, 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 for this case. You can be very, very helpful for us if, uh, that, uh, if that communication will be productive and if we change our, 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 uh, uh, our uh, opinions about that and our documents about that. But also, without that, I think that the special prosecutor in Montenegro have enough uh, material, enough documents to start one very serious, very serious investigation. So it will be good because you know that we are in process of integration of EU and you are EU member, uh, member country. It will be good to also in this case to, 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 to uh, show our, uh, our cooperation because uh, maybe Wind Park Morjura is the uh, most uh, visible case or, or case which is uh, very famous like in negative way, like, like a corruption case. But uh, uh, this should be how two countries should deal when we have some kind of uh, pro problem like this. And it will be good training also for our institution uh, for something what will be uh, in future uh, challenges in the in the concept of, of, of rule of law. So uh, after this, I think that in uh, during the uh, my uh, during this month or so during the March, uh, we will have official com official communication with with the authorities in, in Malta. Thank you very much, Dr. De Marco. Uh, Deputy Prime Minister, j just. Uh... A few words from my end. I, I wish you all the very best of success, obviously, in your fight, our common fight uh, for good governance, our common fight against corruption, our common fight for the supremacy of the rule of law. I think it is such an important fight. Uh, I, I, I really congratulate you on having to manage to overturn uh, 30 years of the same government, of the same party in government. It shows what a power of conviction uh, you have had and obviously this brings about it a, a fresh breath of fresh air within Montenegro. Uh, as you know we are still fighting the struggle even locally in Malta uh, against corruption, against issues related to good governance and we really have this fight to safeguard the autonomy and the independence of our institutions. Uh, there is this common factor, this common story regarding the, the project of the wind farms in Montenegro, which, as we know, is tainted with corruption. Uh, and definitely we look forward to the investigations which will be taking place in Montenegro. And we really hope that the authorities in Malta will cooperate with the Montenegro authorities in its investigation. But I wish you all the best of success in the hard struggle that you have ahead of you. But I have no doubt that you will succeed. Dr. Abbasovic. Thank, Thank you very much, uh, Mr. De Marco. So, uh, I, it's my really and personal um, uh, pleasure to, to, to have the possibility to talk with you and to uh, um, be part of this uh, TV show in, in your country. I know that maybe people uh, don't know too much about Montenegro, but uh, we have a um, lot of similarities. We are also a very, very small country. Uh, almost same like like Malta, and I really uh, hope that in the future we will have uh, more and more communication about some positive things. But to, to come to that, to have the positive communication, and to have uh, uh, positive examples, and to have uh, some kind of projects, and to have more mobility between two countries, I think we uh, interest of the both country Montenegro and Malta is to, to know the truth about what's happening in the, in the project of Wind Park Mojra. If we come into the truth, I think that that will be something which is really interest of, of, of your country, also interest of, of our country. And in that way, we can, we can, we can uh, just uh, say to each other, where is the problem? Uh, who is involved in the corruption? Uh, when we lose our, our money or, or money of your taxpayers or money of our taxpayers, and, and after that to try to, to build cooperation in, in many, many different kinds of sectors. And I am more than sure that, that uh, your experience uh, also in EU and your experience in the 
development in tourism and in different kind of sector will be very very useful also for for Montenegro. So uh, from side of our government, uh, uh, you will uh, you will you will find the, the the partner who is really open for any kind of of, of, of cooperation. We don't want to. to, to uh, uh, we want to be very transparent in, 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 in this case. We promise that to the people. That is our duty and uh, hope also uh, your side will, will have the same, the same, the same will like, like, like our government. One more time, thank you very much. I wish you a lot our of pleasure. success in your, in your job and uh, uh, hope we will, uh, we will stay in touch and uh, maybe soon see some another, another I'm sure we'll have opportunities to cooperate together. I have no doubt about that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Abazovic. Thank you. Good evening. That was uh, Dr. Abazovic, the Deputy Prime Minister of Montenegro. That was um, quite enlightening, Very I would say. Very yes. interesting. Yes. Um, we've actually interviewed him when he was uh, on the opposition. So okay. um, it's, uh, it's quite wonderful after 30 years. Absolutely. Really. And it's good to see this fresh energy. Yes, absolutely. It reminds you of the Nationalist Administration in 1987, after 25 years of Labour government. Absolutely. <laughs> um, can we speak a bit about your portfolio now? And we can't sort of close this programme without touching on Manival. Um, where yes, are we absolutely. with that? We've got, um, Malta has this big shadow right now hanging over it of, of Manival. As we know, uh, we've had this report over a year ago where basically Malta really failed the initial report of, of Manival, where the, this committee of experts of the Council of Europe in the fight against money laundering and terrorism basically said that whereas Malta may have had a number of laws relating to anti-money laundering, they basically said that Malta lacked the will to implement these laws. And they recommended a number of changes that we needed to do uh, across the board in terms of legislation, professional regulation, institutions, regulators, enforcement officials, etc. Uh, we have now seen a lot of activity taking place, but my appeal to government is don't make the necessary changes simply out of convenience, you have to do them out of conviction. Because the real failure of Manival was in the failure of government when it was faced with reports of the FIU basically saying that there were reasonable suspicion of activities of money laundering by Keach Kembri, by Conrad Mitzi, by Brian Tonner. When these reports ended up on the lap of the police commissioner, the police took absolutely no action against these individuals in whose regards there were these FIU reports. So basically, we can have the best legislation in the world, but if the authorities, if the law enforcement, if the regulators fail to take action, then we're just simply wasting our time. Mm -hmm. And the, basically, the authorities need to show that they are not only strong with the weak and weak with the strong, but anybody who has failed, anybody who has broken, breached our legislation, has to be brought to face justice. And I think this is what is really, really needed from government today. Mm -hmm. Okay, if we really want to move forward, it's not a matter of simply passing more laws through parliament. Mm -hmm. They may be necessary, we may need to do so, but beyond the legislation is the implementation of the legislation. And this is where government needs to prove itself, not just in the legislation, but in the implementation. So when it comes to La Manival, it is critical that Malta does not get grey-listed. The opposition certainly does not want Malta to get grey-listed. If we had to do so, it would be the end of the financial services industry in Malta, which depends on reputation. Our reputation has already been affected, Yes. okay, already before the final decision of Manival, okay? So we need to start rebuilding our reputation. And this we can only do if we really show that we are serious in this fight against money laundering. So government needs to show it is doing this fight not out of convenience, but out of conviction.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, you're actually the shadow spokesperson for Air Malta. What is the state of play now? Unfortunately, Air Malta has been and is now in a, in a pitiful state. We have an airline which has lost money uh, tremendously, like many other airlines, because of COVID and the travel restrictions. But we also have an airline which has lost money because of the incompetence of the senior management, because of the fact that we had a government that did not really want to reform Air Malta and manage it in a commercial way, but used it essentially for political motivation. We had a minister who was responsible for Air Malta who terminated the employment of nearly 70 of its pilots by an email overnight without warning. So we have a critical airline which is responsible for bringing more than 30% of our tourists to Malta, who has today ended up with nearly no pilots. We have an area of Malta where senior management gets paid astronomical salaries, but they then demand that the people in the lower ranks make these sacrifices to save money for Immortal. Mm -hmm. It would be good if everybody does sacrifices, but the first examples need to be made by the people at the top. We need uh, Air Malta, which is saved. We heard the Minister for Finance say that he had to discard the plans for state aid, which were done by his predecessor, Silvio Schembri, and start fresh plans. We know that right now, because of COVID, the EU, EU Commission will allow state aid to save a national airline. Air Malta is a national airline. Like other national airlines across Europe have been granted state aid and authorized by the Commission for national governments to give state aid, Air Malta can be saved with a proper serious plan which needs to be presented to the EU Commission. Unfortunately, we have already wasted a lot of time because the previous minister produced incompetent plans. Mm -hmm. We have but to now as, go back as, to the drawing board. As the opposition, you have valid proposals Absolutely. to put forward. We have put, yes. and Air Malta is one of the areas where we need at critical. If the economy has to start growing again once COVID is over, and COVID will be over, tourism is one of the sectors which can give us back growth. Mm -hmm. Tourism in our country accounts for nearly 25 to 30 percent of our GDP, of our gross domestic product. We are more dependent on tourism than other countries. Probably we are the most EU country which is dependent on tourism. Now, if we depend on tourism, you've got three pillars for success in tourism. The product you sell, your country, the marketing with which you sell it, but more fundamentally, accessibility the route connectivity towards our country. We need to rebuild those routes. But to rebuild those routes, we need a Malta, which has always been our valid, reliable partner, both for transportation of people and for transportation of cargo. Thank you. Thank you. A few words, Dr. De Marco. We marked this week the anniversary, the first anniversary of the debt, the unnecessary debt of uh, um, Miriam Patch. Um, would you uh, share some words just absolutely, to close the program? Absolutely. Just very uh, the briefly. The Patch family is a family I know very well, also because uh, they are big admirers of Our Lady of the Carmelites in Valletta. Her debt, her loss, her tragic loss, Miriam's loss, was representative of all that is wrong in this country. This greed that wants to make money through construction at all costs without caring for the lives of others. That is why we lost this life. We mark a year's anniversary but nothing will bring back her loss. No. Nothing will bring back the loss of loved ones. And justice is very hard to be done. Thank so you our much. heart goes up with all the family Absolutely. in this Absolutely. tragic loss and in this momentary anniversary. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. DeMarco. Thank you.
I am with Dr. Mario De Marco, the Honourable Dr. Mario De Marco, and I thank very much the Deputy Prime Minister of Montenegro for joining us tonight. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next week at the same time. Keep your comments coming in. Good evening.